Hi, welcome to America Uncovered. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Do you trust the media? No, of course you don't. That's why you're watching America Uncovered instead of the lamestream media. And you're not alone. According to a 2017 Gallup Night survey, on a multiple item media trust scale, the average American scores a 37. Okay, I don't know what a multiple item trust scale is, but I do know that 37 is not a good score on anything. Even Justice League got higher than 37 on Rotten Tomatoes. And I didn't trust any of those plot devices. First of all, how did Aquaman know where to find everyone? How did he know where to show up just in the nick of time? And what's that, Shelley? Oh, right, the episode. Anyway, Americans have a general sense that the narrative they're seeing in the mainstream media is being controlled and manipulated by forces we can't see. I can't imagine why people feel that way. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible one side of news stories playing our country. If you're wondering what you just saw, that was a montage spliced together by Timothy Burke from Deadspin. It's a mashup of dozens of anchors on different stations reciting the same eerie script, ironically, about the dangers of fake news. And it became real news. How did dozens of anchors from different local news stations end up reciting the same exact thing? Turns out they all belong to Sinclair, a conservative broadcasting group that owns and operates 173 TV stations across the country. And they're in talks to acquire Tribune Media, which would put that number to over 200. That would mean Sinclair would be in over 70% of American households. Sinclair also makes its own content, like this gem. Listen up closely, Snowflake. Yes, I'm talking to you. You, the social justice warrior who whines for trigger warnings and safe spaces. That's a lot of power for an organization you're maybe only hearing about for the first time now. You're not alone. The only Sinclair I knew about before this story broke was the family on dinosaurs. Unfortunately, Sinclair is just a small piece of a much larger issue. Sinclair is worth nearly $3 billion and covers 70% of all households. But there are five much, much bigger media companies that each covers nearly 100% of households. These are the companies that control the five most influential TV news networks. National Amusements, which you've probably never heard of, it has a controlling stake in CBS. Then there's News Corp, which owns Fox. And Time Warner, which runs CNN. And Disney, yes, Disney, which owns ABC. And the biggest of all is Comcast, which owns NBC. It may not be a surprise that the five biggest TV news networks are controlled by multi-billion dollar corporations. But get this, almost every other TV channel is also controlled by one of these five. Yeah, all those TV channels you know and love, pretty much all of them are controlled by one of just five giant conglomerates. Not to mention, some of these conglomerates own more than TV networks. These five companies own a lot of other types of media as well. They also own most of the major Hollywood studios, including DC Films, known for making gems like Justice League. At least DC Films has the benefit of making every Marvel movie look good by comparison. Even Iron Man 2. Despite the plot hole where... Uh, what's that, Shelley? Yeah, yeah, okay. And I know Marvel is owned by Disney. In fact, about 90% of everything you see on TV is all owned by the same five giant companies. And a lot of the other 10% is smaller multi-billion dollar companies like Sinclair, which owns a lot of local TV channels. And all this should concern you if you're interested in getting a variety of truly different independent viewpoints, because this also means a small number of CEOs and billionaires hold big sway over how the American public thinks. As the New York Times points out, there is an aggressive bid by the very wealthy to control the American news media at a time when it is in a financially weakened state, struggling to maintain its footing on the electronic frontier's unstable terrain. The New York Times is right. 
because newspapers, too, are also controlled by an increasingly small number of billionaires, like the Wall Street Journal, which is controlled by Rupert Murdoch, the Washington Post, which is controlled by Jeff Bezos, and Bloomberg, which is controlled by Bloomberg, and also the New York Times itself, which they accidentally forgot to put in their article, is controlled by Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim. I'm sure that was an innocent oversight, though. Now, in all cases, these billionaires say they don't allow their personal biases to affect the media entities they control. And goodness knows, billionaires would never use their power and influence to promote their own interests. But there have been some problems. Take Bloomberg, the media side, not the business side, or the man side. Some Bloomberg employees have said it's hard to report on corruption and go after the elite when the elite are the same people contributing to Bloomberg's annual $9 billion revenue. When President Trump goes after Amazon for tax evasion, does that affect how the Washington Post reports, since Jeff Bezos owns both the Post and Amazon? And the nonpartisan research group Center for Responsive Politics found that the television, movies, and music industry is contributing heavily to their favorite political candidates. They found that this industry collectively contributed five and a half million dollars to Donald Trump's presidential campaign, and almost 24 million dollars to Hillary Clinton's campaign. The reason these media companies were able to form essentially monopolies is thanks to a different Clinton, Bill Clinton, and his 1996 Telecommunications Act. At the signing, he said, it promotes competition as the key to opening new markets and new opportunities. But according to this report from the public interest group Common Cause, instead, the public got more media concentration, less diversity, and higher prices. So when all your media is bought and paid for by the same five companies and handful of billionaires, who can you believe? Me, Chris Chappell. My insane political opinions are my own. The family dog and cat should get married. They've been living in sin. No one's paying me for that kind of view, but you, the viewer. That's right, I'm not funded by some billionaire or some millionaire or even some thousandaire. America Uncovered is funded by direct support from viewers like you. So visit the website patreon.com slash America Uncovered and contribute, for example, a dollar per episode. Sorry for the sales pitch, but that's the only way to support truly independent media. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching this episode of America Uncovered.